Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper again. Ava and I are camped at Douthat State Park, Virginia this week. And in this video, I thought I would talk a little bit about tents with vestibules and garages. This is our Marmot limestone tent in the background, and it has two vestibules, one for the front door and one for the back door. Let's begin with a little background information. Family camping has been a popular recreational activity for over 100 years. And for most of these 100 years, tents did not have a vestibule or a garage. For example, this draw-tight tent developed in the 1960s was the first freestanding tent, but it didn't have a vestibule. I bought this old army wall tent in an army surplus store back in the late 1960s, but it doesn't have a vestibule either. Here are some tents that I used during the 1990s and early 2000s. Notice that none of them had a vestibule. But in the late 1990s, a new tent design emerged. The backpacking dome tent was a small, low-profile tent that consisted of a mainly mesh inner canopy that was completely covered by a waterproof rain fly. At the bottom of the tent, this waterproof rain fly was pulled out away from the tent so that the tent would have sloped walls that could deflect the wind and help improve ventilation. Typically, the rain fly was pulled out a little further in front of the doors, and this covered area became known as a vestibule. Around 2010, tent makers began making larger family tents with this full coverage rain fly and a vestibule. At first, these vestibules were small, but soon after they were developed, tent camping enthusiasts began to suggest different ways to use these vestibules. And as a result, the vestibules got larger and larger. For example, some enthusiasts said you could store your backpacks and muddy or stinky shoes in your vestibule. But this is really not a very good practice because spiders, snakes, and scorpions can get into your backpack or shoes and give you a nasty sting. And your backpack would make a good pillow. Furthermore, when it rains, the water will run down the waterproof fly, and when it hits the ground, it will splatter inside the vestibule and soak anything that is stored inside it. A few enthusiasts suggested that you could store your food and cooking supplies in your vestibule. But this is a terrible idea because the food would attract animal scavengers such as mice, chipmunks, squirrels, raccoons, skunks, and possibly bears. And these scavengers would likely damage your tent materials and could injure you as they look for food. Furthermore, the smaller scavengers, such as mice and chipmunks, would likely attract snakes. Finally, many backpacking enthusiasts have asserted that you could cook your meals in the vestibule when the weather was bad. But this would be a terrible practice because modern tents are made from highly flammable materials and all tent makers expressly warn users never use an open fire inside the tent. Furthermore, if you cook food inside the tent, you're going to saturate the materials with food smells that will attract animal scavengers for many camping trips in the future. In sum... Camping enthusiasts have claimed that vestibules can be used for a variety of reasons, but if you examine these claims carefully, you'll realize that most of them are not valid. In addition to these invalid claims, tents with vestibules have some more disadvantages. For example, they are larger uh, and require more packing space, 
they require more setup time because you have to first determine where the front door is and then align the rain fly so that it matches up to the front door and more setup space. In fact, sometimes they're so large they extend out beyond the tent pad. And I've found that tents with vestibules are more difficult to enter and exit because they have two doors that have to be unzipped and then zipped back and because they make the height of the doorway lower than it would be without the vestibule. But despite these limitations, they still may be the best choice because they offer great storm protection. In the mid-2000s, I began to notice a few tents that had garages that offered a very large covered area in front of the tent. These tents were promoted to motorcycle owners as a great way to attend a motorcycle rally where you would be camping in a large open field. You could park your motorcycle in the garage to protect it from the rain, from the dew, and from vandals. A few months later, I began to notice large family tunnel tents that were very popular in Europe that had a large screened room on the front of the tent. And then REI began to market its Kingdom tent series. These tents had a large vestibule on the back of the tent and an optional garage that could be attached to the front of the tent. Then other tent makers, such as Big Agnes, developed garages that could be attached to their tents. And now just recently, the North Face has developed a tent that has a garage included. To sell these tents with garages, tent makers have claimed that you can use the garage to store your camping equipment and your food. But this would be bad practice for the reasons that have already been listed. Spiders, snakes, and scorpions could hide in your equipment and bite you later on, and larger animals would be attracted to the food and could damage your tent and perhaps injure you. You shouldn't cook in them for reasons already stated. It would increase your risk of fire, and it would saturate the material with food smells that may attract animal scavengers later on. Tent makers have also stated that the garage offers a great place to sit on hot sunny days or on rainy days. But this garage is only about five feet tall, so most people would have to stoop to come into the garage and to get into the tent, Plus, it would be extremely hot on sunny days. So it would be better to set up a large tarp shelter that would allow you to walk around without having to stoop over. And finally, the large garage increases the pack size of the tent. It makes it more difficult to set up. And it may make the tent so long that it won't fit in many campsites or on many tent pads. And so my advice is to avoid the garages and use your money to buy a separate secondary tarp shelter. So what are the best six-person tents for modern tent camping? In my opinion, a simple square or rectangular floor with no vestibules or garages, such as this Eureka Copper Canyon, would be the best choice for most tent camping families. It would be the lightest, most compact, and most economical choice of all of the six-person tents. Furthermore, it is more likely to fit on almost any tent pad. This Eureka Jade Canyon would be another good choice. The Eureka Timberline has been a popular choice for many years. Kodiak's Canvas Flexbow would also be a good choice. Cabela's Getaway Cabin 6 would be another good choice, as would the Big Agnes Big House Deluxe. But if you choose a six-person tent with no 
vestibules, or garages, be sure to secure all stake down loops and guy out loops because they can be easily damaged by a strong gust of wind. If you frequently camp in a very hot climate or in a part of the country that has lots of storms and wind, you may want to consider a tent with a full coverage rain fly and vestibules, such as our Marmot limestone. With the rain fly completely zipped up, it measures about 17 feet long and has two vest vestibules. We typically set up the smaller vestibule in front of our front door and the larger vestibule behind our back door. You can remove the rain fly on hot, steamy nights and get the cooling benefit of the nearly all mesh canopy. In stormy, windy weather, you can pull the full coverage rain fly all the way down to the ground to protect you from the blowing rain. Other good choices include the Kelty Trail Ridge, the REI Base Camp, the Browning Glacier, and the Big Agnes Flying Diamond. Well, I hope this video helps you decide what type of tent is best suited for your own particular family needs. For more information about good family camping tents, please visit my website www.basictentcamping.com and read my book, Basic Tent Camping. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go Tent camping.